what's up ladies and gentlemen we're gonna bring another sea -Doo video to you today um, I want to start off by saying this was a very weird occurrence I've never actually experienced anything like this in any vehicle I've worked on before um, I'm gonna give you guys some great information but I also want to tell you <clears throat> this problem almost burnt my ski up I almost lost this jet ski the other day when this problem happened and what happened was we were on the water everything was fine had almost the whole day in five six hours uh, we were on our way to shore machine died when the machine died I assumed she had sucked something up in the intake grate so she started it up it started working again for a little while and then it went back to shutting itself off it wouldn't idle and it was running very rough so we switched machines i jumped in this one as soon as i got on i knew something was wrong so i popped the hood up and i removed the cover off the engine because there was smoke coming out of it everywhere <clears throat> and what had happened was the center coil all but caught on fire completely melted incinerated and shoved this bunch of stuff right up through the center that when i lifted the cover this coil actually popped right up out of the hole off the spark plug like that so um wasn't a great situation so now I'm going to explain to you what I did to test and figure out what my issue was. So we brought it home. I changed the coil. I changed the spark plug. Seemed fine. Went out to test it on the water again. Same thing happened again. I melted another coil. As you see, there's uh, three of them here all together. So, I said, clearly there's another major issue here somewhere. So, I brought the machine home again. <clears throat> started doing some digging. Down here in the fuse box, the fuse was blown for cylinder number two. Thought, okay, quick, easy fix. We'll change the fuse. Away we go. No, I changed the fuse. And it still continued... To burn the coil now funny thing is is in the process of burning the third coil up i never even drove this thing all i did was have the key in the ignition with the dash on and the smoke started rolling off this coil without the motor even running true as i stand here and as true as i'm talking to you so my friend has a part ski but it's not supercharged so I went down and I grabbed this fuse panel because on the bottom plug-in on mine right here there was a few connections that didn't look the best they weren't rotted off or anything nothing like the issue I found with the voltage regulator but just wanted to rule it out so I went down and I got this fuse box changed it replaced it still had the same result I said okay enough of this we're going to get the multimeter out and we're going to get some numbers here to see what's happening so i unplugged my three coil wires and the way this system works is when the key is in and the ignition is on you should have power at all your coils it's not a flick 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 signal so much it's a steady power signal and it's fed a ground when it needs to fire so but you'll still have a ground when you do testing so what I found was, when I pulled cylinder one, the reading was 12.2. Now keep in mind, we got a brand new battery, and the battery's at 12.8. So this voltage is regulated down. It's not the full power that the battery can send. When I tested the outer coil, because I wanted a good number to go by for the ones that were working, the outer coil, the cylinder three, also read 12.2. So, and this was a voltage reading with your multimeter on DCV, you're reading voltage, obviously. When I tested this center cylinder, I had almost 12.7. I was getting, I believe, 12.65, not running, 
just sitting here with the key in the ignition and I had the coil hooked up now obviously but when I had the coil on hooked doing my tests I also had the coil out of the hole and as soon as I plug this coil into that wire when that was getting 12.6 12.65 this coil will get extremely hot within seconds. Like I said, if you left the key on about 35, 40 seconds with this plugged in, it would melt this coil right here. Take this and make it look exactly like these do. So, this is a supercharged model. My friend's part ski was just a regular Fortech. But I said, well, either way, if I go get the computer, the ECU for the engine, off of his ski I should be able to do some wire wire testing and get an answer here and even though this center cylinder had 1265 it was a no fire issue the plug is not firing it's just simply melting the coil all to heck so drove out to my buddies <clears throat> grabbed the ECU out of the plain Jane non supercharged four tech brought it home plugged it in hooked it up also when you change the ECU from another ski you got to make sure that they have the key for it because the key is programmed to the computer on top of the engine it's not programmed to the fuse box it's programmed to this so we had the key that was fine I brought the key home brought the computer home plugged it in and then I conducted the same wire test on the power output going to these coils not running. What I conducted was, and this computer seems to be newer, less hours, and better shape, I have a steady 12.1 at every coil output. 12.1, 12.1, 12.1. I said, okay, well now I know that I'm getting the same power to all three. I should be safe and should be good to go <clears throat> so I got my center coil and I plugged it in with the key in and I just sat here and watched to make sure it wasn't going to start smoking or do anything silly like the other computer was doing and sure enough <clears throat> it didn't it finally it was fine and obviously after conducting the wiring test I knew this so I then fired it up. This ski will fire up and run for a second off of that computer, but that's all you get because different timing wheels, whatever. You guys, if you put the wrong computer on the wrong engine, you know it's not going to work. Simple as that. Um, but what I was able to do, like I said, with this computer, it's my friend's, it's a free ski sitting in the field in his yard. Now I was able to conduct my test and confirm that the ECU is definitely the problem. And just to verify, you know, I had voltage and everything. The ski didn't run long enough to be able to give it any throttle at all. So we pulled each individual plug, pulled the coils, and did just an open fire test. And sure enough, we've got fire in all three cylinders. So 100%, if you've got a dead coil... <clears throat> The fuse keeps frying in your EPM or MPEM. You've got a bad computer. And if you're in a situation, well, you probably will be that you'll have to order a new one. You got to make sure that you order the one with the right numbers and everything. So if you're going to parts yards, I'd recommend doing your research which computers are compatible with your engine, so forth. But this was definitely the issue for this machine and i'm very very lucky that the ski didn't burn up because sitting right on top of these coil packs you have that four tech plastic engine cover i believe it's sitting here in my building and those coils sit in each one of them little horns there and the, those three pointy things so like i said very lucky this thing didn't ignite and catch fire because it probably would have been the absolute end of it um, and now that we have the computer out of the machine 
Uh, if you've got a good sniffer on to you, a good nose, you put your nose around this thing and start smelling it, and it smells like it's burnt to a crisp. So, I'm going to head into Bombardier this morning. i got a few more videos to do here. And uh, we're going to see what one of these bad boys costs, but I'm guessing it's going to be north of $1,000. So, kind of sucks, but uh, this is the sea do life that you don't see in the commercials, guys. You see those nice commercials on TV, sea do life? Well, this is, I guess, old sea do life because it's not a new one, but... You definitely get into some headaches with these things once in a while. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Um, just one other thing. When conducting and doing all this testing, it's a good idea to unplug your voltage regulator. And it's also a good idea to conduct a stator test, which if you've been watching the videos, I done it in my other one. But the stator test, you simply unplug your stator line coming here behind your throttle body and you want to ohm test every scenario possible on the three wires so you're going to conduct three tests and you want to see between 0 0.1 and 1.1 1 .1 ohm that is your specification minimum and max if that stator is outside of those numbers that's your problem don't even waste your time elsewhere so I conducted the stator test first because I've had other issues through the week with this but now we have a situation that the computer totally fried and it is what it is guys thanks for watching